guys, today I'm going to show you how to start making a sculpture. A sculpture is something you can see all the way around and this sculpture is something that you'll recognize. We're going to giant size an art supply that we use almost daily in here and in your classroom. We're going to giant size pencils or colored pencils or crayons. So be thinking about whether or not you would like to make a pencil, a colored pencil, or crayon. It's really easy to do and this sculpture is going to be something that you'll even have to think about if you're going to make something like a crayon or a colored pencil, what your brand name will be, maybe it will be your name, and what color, what creative name you can give the color that you come up with. I love the name of this one, Artistic aqua. So this sculpture is going to take us a couple of days. We have to build the underneath part first, which is called the armature. Then we're going to make the armature strong by using something called paper mache. That is going to be a little bit liquidy. It's definitely sticky. You're going to love it when we work with it. However, when it dries, it becomes nice and hard. Once that's finished, we get to really decide how we want to paint it crayon, color pencil, or pencil. All right, so let's get started on that armature. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make the armature or the underneath part of your sculpture. A sculpture is something that you can see all the way around. An armature, like I said, is the underneath part of the sculpture. I don't know if you can guess by looking at it, but this sculpture that you're going to create can either be a colored pencil, a pencil, or a crayon your choice. So to start, you'll need to get yourself a tube. This one is a paper towel tube, but any cardboard tube will work. The other thing you'll need to get is a piece of poster board. We want to use poster board. This is a little bit thicker. It doesn't matter if the poster board is used like this piece because you're going to be painting over it anyway. So to start, you're going to need to turn this flat shape, this flat rectangle, into a cone. When you take something flat and you make it fat, that's called a form, and form is an element of art. So to take this rectangle from a flat shape to a three-dimensional form, what we're going to do is start to bend the paper. Now the paper is used to being flat, so be patient with yourself and the paper. What I like to do is start to curve the paper around a little bit and exercise it so the paper gets kind of used to being bent and curved into that shape. You don't want to fold it, that'll put a crease in the paper. So while I'm doing this, my one hand, my right hand likes to stay inside. My left hand is just making sure that the top of my paper stays nice and pointed. And as I turn it around, just kind of spinning the paper, it does not matter if the bottom is uneven. Keep your eyes on the point. And if it comes undone, the good news is, is now the paper is kind of used to being bent that way. So it'll be easier for you to get back on track. So now I'm just kind of curving it around. And the reason I'm wrapping several papers around, is this will be about three or four times it's wrapped around, is because that will make my armature stronger. And it's important that an armature be strong in a sculpture. Now I've got my cone shape. My next step is to take some tape and tape that in place. Now, I will tell you that it's kind of tricky to tape this because it keeps wanting to uncurl. So it might help to have a friend hold it for you while you tape it. A piece of tape going vertically and one crossing over that perpendicularly would be great because that'll make it stronger. I would also, if I were you, have my tape already torn and sitting on the edge of the table and ready. That way you can just grab it and stick it on. I used three pieces, one, two, and three. Now what I need to do is cut off all of this excess stuff. So all I'm going to do is just start my scissors at the part where I want it, the paper to be and just turn the paper with one hand as my scissors are cutting. Sometimes it'll cut through two pieces of poster board so it'll, you'll feel it's a little bit thicker and a little more difficult to cut. There we go. That can be moved out of the way. And now I'm ready to start putting this on my cone. Now you'll see mm, it's a little too big. So what you need to do is make some cuts that will bring it up to the top of the board. 
of the cone, I'm sorry, the <laughs> cylinder shape. So I'm just making some short little cuts. Watch your fingers. My other hand is just kind of holding it in place. These cuts don't have to be perfect. If they're a little bit too long or too short, it's okay. Just go all the way around. And once you're finished, you might find that mm, it still is a little bulky up here. So slide that off and make these cuts a little bit longer. Okay, if they are longer than they need to be, that will help them fold over the cone. So no worries about it being exact. Those cuts are nice and long. Now, when I slide it over, it fits really well. Now, my job is to start taping that in place. So again, have your tape ready, and you're going to make several lines of tape around and around and around, as well as some short pieces of tape that come down this way. You don't have to cover the whole thing. You just want to make sure it's nice and secure and it's not going to come off. Now let's talk about the bottom. The bottom of your tube needs to be covered with about three pieces of very thick tape. So I'm just tearing the tape and you can just go ahead and get yourself a nice big piece of tape. And then that tape is ready for you when you're ready to cover it. So I'm just putting one here across the bottom. I'll put another one there and maybe just one more across to secure it. And then I'm pushing all of it down. I'm not worried about those little lumps and bumps. Our next step after this is finished is to do something called paper mache. Paper mache is what we will put over the tube and it will help strengthen it. It'll also make it so that the surface of our crayon, pencil, or colored pencil is ready for us to paint. All right, so let's get started. Now when your sculpture is all finished, what you'll need to do before you move on to painting and really making these look like a pencil, a crayon, or a colored pencil is you'll need to prime your sculpture. What that means is you're going to take your sculpture and just paint the entire thing white. And that will make it so that the whole thing is ready for you to add color, like a blank sheet of paper. Once that paint is nice and dry, then you can decide what exactly you're going to make. Let's say you're going to make a pencil. If you're making a pencil, you'll need to take your newly painted white sculpture and start drawing some pencil lines on here. So maybe a line that goes around the top, and that would be the lead of your pencil. Where the diagonal of your pencil meets the vertical, you'll want to add another line there. It might even be wavy to show where it's been sharpened. That right here would be the wood of the pencil. From here to near the bottom, that space would be the pencil itself. And of course, we've got the line for the eraser. Then you'll need to mix some colors that are really good for a pencil. One for the lead, maybe black. White and brown make a really good light brown. A tint of brown would be excellent for the wood. A nice pop and bright yellow is perfect for the pencil. And a red with white to make a tint of red or pink would be great for the eraser. If you're doing a color pencil, then you just have to mix a color that you really like and make a little space for the wood. Some color pencils have erasers, but most do not. But oftentimes what you'll see at the bottom is you'll see where the wood is and a little dot for the lead. Let's say you're making a crayon. For a crayon, you'll want to draw another line where the diagonal meets the vertical. You'll need to think about what color you want your crayon to be and mix that color. Once you have that color mixed and you've painted the top, and the bottom, you'll need to create a tint or a lighter version of that color for the middle. So this artist used orange and then mixed orange and white to create a tint of orange. That entire band was painted light orange and when that was dry, two stripes of black paint were added around. You'll notice that this one is a little shiny at the top and the bottom and that the pencil was very shiny. The, these both have varnish on them. Varnish is what makes something even more solid and shiny. 
This artist chose not to add varnish here to make it look more like paper. This one has varnish all the way down. Once it's been painted, then you can get some foil and make the aluminum band around. And if you even want to add a little two for the number two pencil. If you made a crayon, you can get really creative with your label. You can name your crayon company your name or something else. And you might even want to think about what blue or what color you're making and you get to name that color. Grandma Blue. Perfect. You guys have an awesome time making your crayons, pencils, and colored pencils.